In the previous lecture, we discussed parallel plate capacitors and we were able to determine what the capacitance equation is for a parallel plate capacitor. Now we're going to examine a second type of capacitor that is known as a cylindrical capacitor. And we're going to determine what the capacitance equation is for such a capacitor. So let's begin by defining what a cylindrical capacitor is and let's see what it actually looks like. So a cylindrical capacitor consists of an inner solid cylindrical wire with a radius given by R2 surrounded by a cylindrical outer shell of inner radius R1. And that's shown in the following diagram. So this is our inner solid wire of radius R2 and this is our outer cylindrical shell that has an inner radius given by R1. Notice that this outer shell has a certain thickness to it. So it has an inner radius and an outer radius. The outer radius is not shown in this diagram. Now in the space between our inner and outer shell, we have air and that air acts to insulate our electric charge. Now the capacitor is or both the wire and the shell have equal length and that's shown in the following diagram. So if we take our cylindrical capacitor and we examine the side view, we're going to see something like this. So this will be our inner wire and this is our outer shell and the length of the wire and the shell will be exactly the same. So, the capacitor is charged in such a way that the inner wire and the outer shell have equal quantity of electric charge but are opposite in signs. So let's say this inner wire has a positive Q charge, then that means the outer wire has a negative Q charge. So knowing this information, we want to calculate what the capacitance is of such a cylindrical capacitor. So what what exactly is the equation for capacitance? So let's begin by looking at the method that we're going to use to solve our problem. So first we basically want to calculate what the voltage difference is between the inner wire and the outer shell. And then we want to apply this equation. Q is equal to C multiplied by V, where V is our voltage difference that we're going to calculate. Q is our electric charge that is stored on either one of these regions. And C is what we're solving for. That's our capacitance. So, let's begin by applying this equation, which we were able to derive in a previous lecture. We said that the voltage difference between two points, V is equal to negative of the integral of the dot product of the electric field and our infinitely small distance given by DL. Now, in an earlier lecture, we were able to use Gauss's law to show that the electric field near a very long solid wire of charge is given by the following equation. The electric field is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught multiplied by r, where, la where lambda is simply the charge per unit length. So lambda is given by q divided by l and this is simply our radius beginning at our axis for this region. So it's smack in the middle. So we essentially want to apply this equation that we were able to derive using Gauss's law and we're going to apply this result. So our voltage difference is equal to negative of the integral. We begin at the radius R1 and we end at radius R2. So we're essentially integrating this way. Now our E, well our E is simply this quantity so we plug that in for our E, our electric field. Lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught multiplied by, we have the 1 divided by R, so dr divided by r, where l was replaced with our infinitely small dr. Now this is equal to negative, we essentially take our constant and bring it outside of our integral and we replace our lambda with q divided by l. So the outside 
side becomes negative q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught multiplied by L and we integrate from R1 to R2 dr divided by R. Now if we actually integrate this, this becomes a natural log. So our voltage difference is equal to negative Q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught multiplied by L multiplied by the natural log of R from R1 to R2. Now we actually evaluate our integral and we get this result. Notice we have a negative sign in front. We want to get rid of that negative sign. We'd like to make it into a positive sign. So if we switch these so that the top is R1 and the bottom is R2 by the laws of logs we know this will become a negative. So negative times a negative gives us a positive. So that means the voltage difference is equal to positive Q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught multiplied by L and that fraction is multiplied by the natural log of the ratio of R1 divided by R2 where R1 is this inner radius of the outer shell and R2 is this radius of our inner wire as shown. So now we finally are ready to apply this equation. Q is equal to CV. So Q is equal to CV. We can take this equation and solve for our capacitance. We see the capacitance is equal to Q divided by V, where once again the capacitance is the capacitance of our cylindrical capacitor. Q is the quantity of charge that is stored on either the inner uh, wire or the outer shell and V is the voltage difference between these two regions. So, we were able to show what the voltage is in terms of the radii, so let's take the voltage and replace it with this equation, and we get the following result. Notice the Q's will cancel, this will go on top, and we're left with the following result. The capacitance for a cylindrical capacitor is equal to 2 pi multiplied by epsilon naught, our permittivity of free space constant, multiplied by uh, L, the length of our wire, divided by the natural log of R1 divided by R2, where R1 is the inner radius of the outer shell, and R2 is the radius of the inner solid wire as shown in the following diagram.